Hey, it's me, Steve. It is July 4th, 2017, times 1037. It's about 62 degrees Fahrenheit out. We're on Trans Canada 17, heading towards the Sioux. You're gonna hear cars go by. I'll just stop talking when it does. But anyway, we are at GPS 47.00335 north by 84.78. 526 West and I just wanted to show you here because over here we have uh, Okay behind me what you see is you see rocks of the mid-continental rift like you do in the upper peninsula and in Wisconsin um, But here you see there's basalts here But he, over here You see conglomerates Um this, uh, this is very common here, but it's also common in the Upper Peninsula. But what's different here is that these basalts and these volcanics, they're considered the Osler group over here. As where in the Upper Peninsula, what would be equivalent to the Osler group would be equivalent to about the Arano group in uh, the Upper Peninsula. And the reason why they're different is because, like I said, you see some conglomerate here. The reason why we have two different groups on each side of the border from Canada to the Upper Peninsula of Wisconsin is that here the Osler group is dominantly volcanics. You see basalts, andesites, and rhyolites. As where they're equivalent in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan is mostly sedimentary. The basal formation looks a lot like this, which would be the Copper Harbor formation. But the difference is in uh, the Upper Peninsula, you had the basal Copper Harbor formation, which is known to contain volcanics nowhere on the scale that they are on this side of the border and you also have above the copper harbor formation you have the nunsuch shale and the frida sandstone you don't have a nunsuch and frida equivalent on this side of the border you just get these thick volcanics with thin sedimentary rocks in between them. mostly conglomerates Mostly conglomerates, but you do get some sandstones. You, you never get any thick shales, and you never get any sandstones that would be of equivalent size to what the Frida and Nunsuch would be. So, and plus, in Lake Superior, there's the Thiel Fault, which kind of separates the two. And we're about 300 kilometers from the nearest outcrop of uh, Arano Group. Um, but these things have been dated. And they, there are chronostratigraphic equivalents with the lakeshore traps, which intertongue with the Copper Harbor formation in the Upper Peninsula. Some of those have been dated, and, and some are even younger, but. But the fact that the stratigraphy is so different and you get a totally different setting in a regime means that you do need two different lithostratigraphic frameworks for naming these rocks. When the, in the upper peninsula, when you started getting sediments coming in the volcanics, it all but stopped. I mean, like I said, you get some, a little bit of lakeshore traps in the Copper Harbor formation, but by the time the Nunsuch stops, it's done. There's no more volcanic activity. As we're on this side, you still had some volcanic activity going on, and a lot of it um, compared to what's in the Upper Peninsula. But I just wanted to explain how just because something's time equivalent doesn't mean it's equivalent stratigraphically. Um, that's it, and I hope you learned something.